Hello and welcome dear viewers to the new topic on IVIVC that is in vitro in vivo correlation and in this video we are going to understand and learn about the basics of IVIVC. So let's start with the video. See whenever you come across a terminology or term of IVIVC, first of all you should think regarding the meaning of this terminology. Otherwise you will not understand the related things and the related stages. So by the meaning of word it is IVIVC that is called as in vitro in vivo correlation. See whenever the drug formulation is made in the primary stage that is in the early formulation development that time the formulation is prepared from the API and that formulation is dosed and that formulation will get disintegrated or then dissolved and then the drug substance will get absorbed into the body and by getting the plasma profile concentrations of that particular formulation from the human subjects you will have the data or information about how the drug substance reaches to the systemic circulation. This is very simple thing that you have prepared the formulation, you have dosed that formulation and now you have the plasma profile concentration or plasma profile data. Now you will also have the dissolution data for the same formulation and now you think that you are correlating the dissolution with the plasma profile data. See without having the actual plasma profile concentration data, IVIVC becomes very limited or impossible sometimes because you don't have the one part that is in vivo. So in vivo in vitro or in vitro in vivo correlation will need two types of data or two type of the information. One is in vitro information or in vitro data and another is the in vivo information or in vivo data and then you can correlate the data with a systemic correlation between these two data and then you can establish or then you can make a model or mathematical correlation establishment can be done based on this in vitro and in vivo data. Then you can say that if I get this type of release profile I can get this type of in vivo plasma concentration profile data. So now if you see the definition of IVIVC, it is a predictive mathematical model that describes the relationship between an in vitro property of the doges form and the relevant in vivo response. The example here I have included is in vitro dissolution or drug release and in vivo plasma concentration profile including Cmax and Tmax and AUC. The formulations are mainly IR formulation or ER formulation. Sometimes some delayed release formulations are there for oral administration and this type of formulations are studied for IVIVC. Now you consider that you have multiple formulations and you have multiple in vivo data. You have multiple in vitro data and now you are going to 
correlate these things then you can establish a mathematical model that will describe the relationship between the in vitro property of the formulation that is drug release and the in vivo response for example you consider drug release at 15 minutes versus c max or drug release at 30 minute versus c max or t max and drug release after 60 minutes or 1 hour or 2 hour or 3 hours and the aus so based on this drug release or percent dissolved in vitro in dissolution testing versus the fraction of dose absorbed in vivo so how much is released or how much is dissolved in in vitro dissolution and how much is reaching to the systemic circulation now i hope you might have got the exact meaning of ivivc and this ivivc involves correlating the two data this in vitro dissolution and in vivo response or in vivo plasma concentration profile of the formulation is correlated by using a mathematical modeling that is known as ivivc now we will see the another aspect ivivc involves establishment of the relation between the in vitro characteristic of the formulation to the absorption bioavailability c max t max auc so as i have mentioned this is the another way that you are going to correlate the release versus the absorption if you have the different type of formulations then you can correlate the in vitro properties versus in vivo properties oral formulation with dissolution as a rate limiting stage now if you see if you have a formulation which is showing very fast release say within 5 minutes so it will be very difficult to correlate the formulation and in vivo response so there are some limitations for the formulations which are very rapidly releasing the api bcs class of the form uh, api and the release characteristic of the api bcs solubility and permeability of the drug substance or api has a huge impact on ivivc establishment so formulation release profile versus ivivc we can consider that the ir er and dr formulation design so if formulation is made up with bcs class 1 or 3 that is highly soluble api and if it is a rapidly dissolving type of formulation then ivivc will be very limited because th for this type of formulations the dissolution is not a rate limiting stage but the gastric emptying and the permeability will be the rate limiting stage bcs 2 and 4 ivivc can be possible because for this two type of the bcs classes 2 and 4 these have limited solubility or low solubility and that's why dissolution becomes the rate limiting stage then ivivc can be possible for bcs class 4 drugs ivivc may be less predictive or may not be possible in some of the cases because these bcs class 4 type of uh, apis are low soluble and low permeable and it is very difficult to understand the relationship between the dissolution solubility and permeability versus the in vivo plasma concentration so for class 4 type of apis ivivc can be limited 
then mr formulations for modified release formulations ivivc is always possible and is not much limited because for this type of formulations the dissolution is controlled and the dissolution becomes the rate limiting stage for absorption so we have to understand here that for mr type of formulation or modified release type of formulations like prolonged release sustained release extended release type of formulations ivivc is possible and is more predictive then what are the applications of ivivc why we are doing the ivivc studies first of all if you see regulatory recommendations and formulation design so ivivc is uh, recommended by the regulatory bodies for the nda formulations like new new doses forms are there if you are going to establish the new doses forms then you should have ivivc and it is recommended by the regulatory bodies so that they can understand the formulation behavior in vitro and in vivo then the formulation designing or formulation r and d should have the ivivc data so that whenever the formulation is required to be changed that time ivivc data will help to understand the impact of change of formulation or change in the release profile versus the in vivo response then prediction of bioavailability and the bioequivalence that is bab based on in vitro data based on ivivc model if you have ivivc in place then you can predict the bioavailability and you can also predict the bioequivalence suppose you are working on multiple formulations or multiple reference product if you are working on global formulation development that time this ivivc will help you to understand whether your test formulation will pass with the rld of different strength or different market or not so that will give you some idea regarding the performance of the test formulation in the bioequivalence and bioavailability studies then less clinical bab studies on human subjects if you provide the ivivc data to the regulatory bodies then you can view the clinical studies and that's why the use of human subjects or exposure of the drug to the human subjects can be reduced then clinically relevant specifications if you have ivivc data you will give clinically relevant specifications to the formulation dissolution then dissolution specification can be designed and ranges can be established so whenever you have ivivc data you can give the exact dissolution specification considering the in vivo response or if you find that different release profiles or different dissolution profiles of the formulations does not impact the in vivo behavior then you can give the relaxed specifications also then you can have a better control on cmas and cpps cmas are nothing but the critical material attributes and cpps are the critical process parameters if you understand that the particle size of the api plays a crucial role in in vivo then you will give a tight control over the cma similarly you can control the cpps then ivivc data will support the supac changes because as per the supac guidelines the cmc data is required cmc data involves the data of chemistry manufacturing and the controls and stability and bioequivalence is required for some of the formulations as per the supac principles 
So IVVC data, if it is available, then SUPAC changes can be justified in an easy way and the formulation can get the approval within the less time. Then you can support the behaviors for different strengths like you have performed the IVIVC modeling on higher strength and you are going to wave or you are going to apply for the behavior for the lower strengths. Then IVIVC data has a very important role. It supports the NDA, ANDA and supplementary filings like additional strengths. Then changes to the formulations can be supported by the IVIVC and QBD can be supported by IVIVC. If you perform the QBD for your formulation, you make the trials with higher and lower uh, concentration or level of the excipients and higher and lower levels of the process parameters. So those things can be easily justified based on the IVIVC data. See, IVIVC can be established both in fasted and fed condition. Also, it can be established in crossover bioequivalent studies as well as in the parallel bioequivalent studies. So these are the study designs for bioequivalent study. For now, you remember that IVIVC can be established in fasted state, fed state or both. It is also can be applied for steady state and crossover design or parallel design. Steps in the IVIVC. How you can go for the establishment of IVIVC? So in this video, I am covering the basics. In the upcoming videos, we will go in depth for understanding all these terminologies and we will discuss the exact procedures. So steps in IVIVC are develop IVIVC model. Evaluate the predictability. Predictability is uh, nothing but it is the establishment of or it is the study of how much your model predicts the in vivo response. If you develop a model, if it is not predictive, then you cannot say that I have made a IVIVC. Your IVC model should predict the in vivo response based on the in vitro properties. So that is the predictability. Sometimes your IVC model will predict the exact response. Sometimes it will have some errors. Then use IVIVC to establish the specifications for dissolution. Then apply IVIVC as a surrogate for B study. So these are the simple steps for developing the IVIVC model. Generally, the fast profile, slow profile and medium profile for the dissolution is selected. 3-4 batches are made with different release profile or dissolution profile and then these are dosed or these are studied for bio study and then the model is established considering the in vitro response versus the in vivo response. In IVIVC, convolution deconvolution is involved and convolution deconvolution means predicting or calculating or back calculating the dissolution versus in vivo response that is in vivo absorption. In simple meaning, convolution deconvolution means establishing a relationship between the drug released versus drug absorbed. Then coming to the IVIVC levels, 
mainly level a level b level c and multiple level c are the four levels so level a is the most common type of level for ivivc and it is used in inds and nds this level involves point to point correlation convolution deconvolution then level a is highly recommended because it involves the point to point correlation then ivivc level a involves the use of fast medium and slow release resolution formulations and based on that the ivivc is made then level b is somewhat rare it uses the mean parameters like mean dissolution time versus mean in vivo residence time that is mdt and mrt level c is used in the early development in vivo pharmaco kinetic parameters like auc cmax are used and in vitro dissolution data at a single point are considered for the study multiple level c is like level a this involves study of multiple input and output parameters input parameters are nothing but the release for uh, release param, uh, release of the api and output parameters are the plasma concentration parameters then basic considerations what are the basic considerations formulation to be used for ivivc establishment should be with faster medium and slow release profile so that you can understand the differences in vitro and in vivo then dissolution should differ by 10% to understand the impact in vivo if you made a formulation with uh, uh, with a difference in the release profile with merely 5% and if that formulations behave similarly in the in vivo then you will not have the particular range or you will not have a predictive ivivc so that you should make the formulations which are differing with each other with at least 10% so that it should get reflected into the in vivo performance performance of an ivivc model is estimated as prediction error so prediction error should be estimated very uh, crucially select the appropriate formulation types and number of formulations for ivivc generally the fast slow and medium type of release profiles or matching type of release profiles are used but if you want more formulations and more number of studies then ivc ivc will be less limited choose the appropriate parameters for iv ivc that means if your formulation behavior is understood well then you can establish the appropriate parameters then iv ivc may be less predictive for bcs class 1 and 3 drug formulations with ir design as the bcs class 1 and 3 are highly soluble type of apis and these are less dissolution dependent iv ivc is less for bcs class 4 api and ir formulations it is very limited for bcs class 4 apis and the ir formulations iv ivc can be better if the absorption is dissolution dependent so this is very important to understand that whether the formulation is showing dissolution dependent absorption or not sometimes for rapidly releasing type of formulations the gastric emptying time and the permeability becomes important and for this type of formulations it becomes very difficult to establish the iv ivc because iv ivc considers the release versus absorption and if absorption is not dependent on to the drug release then it is very easy to understand that iv ivc will be limited for those formulations so i hope i have covered maximum basic of the iv ivc i have referred ema and usfda guidelines for making this basic summary see if you have iv ivc in hand then the 
formulation gets approval within less time. This is regarding the summary of IVMVC. Please keep on watching and keep learning from the Pharma Learning In Depth channel. Thank you for watching.